So, hello everyone. This is Sean Taylor, Field Application Scientist for BioRad Canada. And today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about our software that drives um, our Luminex uh, instruments called Bioplex Manager. So our version of the Luminex technology is termed Bioplex. And the reason why we call it um, Bioplex is because we drive the Luminex instrument using entirely our own manufactured software, which comes with um, with a variety of uh, peripherals that allow you to to control the instrument and maintain and validate the instrument very precisely uh, when you run uh, the assays. So when you launch the software, <coughs> you get this quick guide and. We've made the software extremely intuitive uh, for any user to be able to follow it very, very, very easily. So you just follow the steps of the quick guide, essentially, to be able to start up the instrument, and then I'll show you how to, how to create a protocol. So click Startup, and what you get is an instruction, set of clear instructions, very step by steps. So you just have to follow the steps in the instruction along with a picture of what's called our maintenance, calibration, and validation plate. And this plate is a reusable plate. Um, it's used to basically perform all the functions that the instrument is required to get it started up in preparation of using, of reading one of the assay plates and also during the shutdown process. And this section, that's this section of the plate, and then this, this other section of the plate is used to validate all working functions of the instrument because it is, remember, a precision uh, instrument with uh, with uh, lasers that are very carefully aligned and fluidics and, and pumps and fluids going through the instrument and all these things need to be uh, tested and validated periodically. And this plate allows you to do this. And this whole system of validation and maintenance is very unique to the BioRad um, to the BioRad package offering for uh, for Luminex technology. So, what do we do? We empty the waste bottle. It tells us to refill the buffer that goes pumps through the system. Make sure that the 70% isopropanol and water, and these are all clearly labeled on the plate, are filled. And then click eject to extract the plate. And then to to open the plate carrier, then you pop this plate in, and you click OK. And the instrument takes about four minutes. It goes through a wash procedure and and uh, and priming of pumps and so on, pumping fluid through, and then it says startup complete. So we click OK. Now we're ready to calibrate the instrument. So we click calibrate, and we're going to calibrate for both the red and green laser with special calibrated beads that come with the instrument. So you receive uh, bottles of beads that calibrate the red laser and to calibrate the green laser. One vial of each, <coughs> which permits multiple calibrations, more than enough calibrations to last you easily a year with these with these kits that come with the instrument. And each bottle is is verified with uh, with with uh, special numeric values, doublet discriminator and uh, classification values to assure that the instrument is being calibrated properly with these beads. So basically, you would enter these values in the software so that you match the right vial with the right control number. So you're, you're assuring that you're using the appropriate control number for Cal1 and then the appropriate control number with matched numeric value on the vial for Cal2. So these assure that you're using the right calibration beads to calibrate the lasers. And you calibrate the lasers every time you turn on the system. So again, we open the plate. We click OK. It tells us again, make sure that we vortex the Cal1 and Cal2 be, uh, vials very well. Add five drops into the appropriate reservoir for each one. Make sure the, the deionized water is filled in the MCV plate. Click eject. Click OK. And then, the instrument calibrates itself. So this process again takes about maybe two or three minutes. And once this process is finished, then it will tell us that the calibration passed. And you can see down here we're able to see beads per second. 
a number of total beads counted for the calibration. And you want the beads per second to be well above 200 and the number of beads counted to be in well into the thousands. And then it will tell us the Cal, Cal 1 and Cal 2 pass. So we click OK. So we started up, we've calibrated. We're ready to do a new protocol. So we click New Protocol. And here we get the Protocol Setup screen. So I'm just going to maximize this window. And again, just follow the steps from 1 to 7. So describe the protocol. You can enter a description. Enter as much text as you wish. Select Analyze. So here's where we select our analytes. So BioRAD strength, as I've mentioned in previous, uh, in previous webinars, is in uh, cytokines, chemokines, and as well, phosphoproteins. We also have a diabetes panel, and uh, we have an angiogenesis panel as well. So we have, and we have an acute phase panel too. So we have a variety of disease panels that are specific to certain diseases, and we have large panels of cytokines. So we have for human, we have a 27 plex and a 21 plex, so a total of 48. And for mouse, we have a 23 plex and a 9 plex. And we're constantly adding more and more analytes to these groups. So best to go on the BioRad website to learn more about what's available. But, but these are very much our strengths. So if we're to add analytes, generally what I do is I pick, the, pick a high plex group that contains the analytes I'm using. So like the, let's say I'm working with human, the 27 plex, and you know, I would just pick the analytes. So I'm just hitting control and enter to pick a variety of analytes. And then you just add them over. So there we go. So let's say I'm working, I happen to be working with a five plex that contains these analytes. Next step, format plate. So now we're ready to format the plate. Typically, on a typical plate, we have standards for a standard curve. So we, we click standard. We click the number of replicates we're using on the standard, typically two. Replicates typically go horizontally. And now you just fill them in. And I usually put them A1 to H2. So that's where I usually put the standard curve. Then we obviously have blanks. And the blanks are usually for me, the standard dial unit. That's what I typically use the blank. And then unknowns. Maybe in duplicate, maybe in singlicate, depending if you have a large number of bio reps. We often recommend duplicates, going up or down, however you wish. And again, I'm just clicking and dragging the mouse to enter in my standards as I wish. So, you know, you can, and if you've made a mistake, you don't like the way it's worked out. You can use the eraser, you can delete, and then you can re-enter if you wish them to go in a certain direction. And there we go. Okay, so doing a plate is very, very straightforward, very easy to do. Next level, next step is standards. So we enter the standards. So this is a very nice tool in the software for, for entering standards, and you can see we have um, we have our standards here, and we can enter them in. So we have the option to be able to enter standards manually. So we can start with our drop-down menu, IL-1 beta. Basically, what you do is you enter the concentration of S1. So that's the most concentrated standard, typically. So let's say it's 20,000 picogram per ml. The dilution factor in our standard curves, it's usually a serial dilution that we recommend, which is a four times serial dilution. And then you can click Calculate, and it automatically calculates the serial dilution based on the starting concentration and the fourfold. So these now are populated. Now, and you can do this for the remaining standards. So you know, you go to the next standard, IL-2. And let's say IL-2 is 22,211. And again, it's a four-fold dilution factor. Click Calculate, and I've, cal I've populated IL-2. So you can do it this way. If you're working with a high-plex assay, it doesn't take too long to do this for a large plex, so no big deal. 
But what we could also do is we could uh, we could we could uh, import standards from uh, lot files that are available. So you can click external standards info. Oh, sorry, select external standards, fill available list. No, sorry, manage standard lots. Okay, and here we have a bunch of standards that we can enter. So we can so these are lots that are available on our website lot files. You can enter in the standards you wish. So let's say this is um, the Human 27 Plex. We can import that. Okay. Standard lots. Open. And import. So it already exists. So yes, I'll update it. So I'm just updating all the lots because I've already done this before. Close. And now I can load one of these lots. So let's say I happen to be working with the Group 127 Plex. Click OK. And it's now it's automatically, as you can see, populated based on the values that are in that lot for the, for this, for the S1 and using a fourfold serial dilution. So I've got everything done for me. So this is typically this entering standards. So by just using Manage Standard Lots and Loading, we're done. Okay. But what I find is that typically with other software packages that drive Luminex instruments, this task is very tedious. It can be as tedious as having to enter each of these values one at a time for each of the cytokines that are in there. So this eliminates that completely. So entered my standard information. Now I'm going to go to, <coughs> if I have controls, I can enter controls. Samples, I can enter descriptions. I typically don't enter this until the end. You can re-enter all this data in after the run is after the run is over very, very easily. And then I go to run protocol. So you can see that we have populated our our bead map with each of the of the analytes that we've entered. Okay, so there's our five plex. We're going to count 50 beads per region, which is standard. You can change this number if you wish. Okay, but we're going to count 50 beads of each of these lots. And each of these lots, or, or sorry, of, uh, of beads or analytes, there are 2,500 per well of each of IL-13, IL-5, and so on. So counting 50 is no problem. 50 out of 2,500 is a very low number, and you can actually recount a plate multiple times if you wish. Sample timeout. I like to set the timeout for 45 or 60 seconds, just in case I made a mistake with entering my standards in. So if I made a mistake with entering my one of my standards, that will avoid the instrument dwelling over a well for a long period of time trying to find a region that was that was entered wrong. So that way, it'll just move to the next well after 45 seconds, and you can, and and then you'd realize that, and you could re uh, reanalyze your data based on moving your your bead region to the appropriate one where your beads actually were. Um, so once I've done this, I'm ready to go, and I click start, and the instrument will start. I'm not connected to an instrument right now, so it's actually not going to start, but it's, it, it is literally as simple as this to set up a protocol and start up the instrument. Once the instrument has completed uh, running and you've collected all the data for all your analytes for your 96 wells, then you can shut down the instrument. So here we are, and we click shut down in the quick guide. So we're at the end. We just go back to our quick guide. We click shut down. It's telling us again, fill the 10% bleach because now we're going to bleach out the instrument. Uh, we're going to do the water, so we're basically going to decontaminate. Click, click extract plate. So you take out your plate, add in the MCB plate, click OK, and it shuts down. And then when shutdown is finished, it'll say the shutdown process is complete. Remove the MCB plate, turn the power off of everything, shut down the computer, and loosen the lid if you were using a sheath fluid. So it gives you little instructions at the end, and you're ready to shut off the instrument. Simple as that to run a Bioplex assay with Bioplex Manager software. I'll be releasing another webinar on how to analyze data with Bioplex Manager because it's the same software 
exactly the same software package.